Welcome to the new audio podcast with Thomas Jelmy. Take off now and boost your efficiency in leadership, teamwork and customer contact. Today's topic is situational leadership. Have you ever asked yourself as a leader whether you are choosing the right leadership style? Or whether there could be a different style by which you could be even more effective as a leader? That's a very legitimate question. And many leaders at some point in time choose one leadership style. And then they stick to it, like a directive leadership style, a commanding leadership style, or a very um, collaborative leadership style. Of course, it can make sense to just pick one and choose one and, and stick to it, and you may be effective up to a certain point. In today's environment, in today's organizations, with the younger generations coming into the organizations and the workplace, it is recommended to be a bit more flexible when it comes to choosing the right leadership style. And I would like to give you some impulses and point towards uh, this direction with this podcast. What I often experience Uh, in my work with leaders and what I often hear from employees is that some leaders vary their leadership style between two poles, between two extremes, one being high appreciation and the other one being a low appreciation. So based on whether an employee meets the expectations regarding performance and behavior or not, the leader chooses to show a high level of appreciation and little pressure or at the other far end, low appreciation and a lot of pressure in their leadership. So together with many colleagues, I am of the opinion that anything any behavior that goes below a line of minimum respect and appreciation is a no-go. Maybe you yourself have already experienced leaders who started to scream at other people, who started hitting their fist on the table, who became loud and who may even have become disrespectful towards their team members. This is not an option. There is no right in the world that grants you the option to scream at other adult people. What is the reason for such a kind of a behavior? The main reason lays in a lack of alternatives, a lack of options. Like, The question, when, when do you start screaming at your kids? It's when you don't know what else to do. When you run out of options, that's when you start screaming, right? And it's the same thing in leadership. A screaming leader, a leader who, who yells at other people, immediately disqualifies himself or herself and immediately shows that apparently... Uh, there are no alternatives but to scream at others. There are alternatives. And I would like to show you one approach by which you can avoid going there and by which you can increase your level of effectiveness in your leadership. And that's the approach of situational leadership. And I would like to describe it in my own words so it uh, hopefully makes sense to you. So, based on a minimum of respectful and re appreciative behavior, you can choose your leadership style in a different way and vary it in a different way, not between high or low appreciation, but between two other poles, which we, would, we, which we could call directive leadership on the one end 
and on the other end, delegation. So what does that mean? Directive leadership would mean that I do not only tell my employee or my team member what the goal is, but I also show the way to the goal. So I don't only say what needs to be achieved, but also how it needs to be done. I give direction. On the other far end, delegation means that I give a whole task to somebody and then I get out of the way as a leader and I let them do their work. Because this person may even be more competent and know better how to get to the goal than I as a leader do. So these are the two extremes. In between, we find two more leading styles or leadership styles, which is uh, to train and to support based on the specific criteria by which I choose my leadership style. Now, what are these criteria? Number one, of course, is the situation and its requirements. And there are certain situations that clearly require a very directive leadership. Any type of crisis situation, any type of situation that requires fast action, fast and direct action. Imagine the firefighters coming to a burning house. They do not first create a circle of chairs and start discussing who would uh, be the right person to get uh, the water from, uh, from the, uh, the fire car. Nobody would do that. Instead, it's clear instructions, clear directions, go, because it needs to be fast and decisive action. So the situation is one criteria that you can base the choice of your leadership on. Another one is the level of maturity of your team member. And here we also have four levels based on two main aspects that determine the level of maturity. Those aspects are skill and will or the level of competency that the person shows and the level of engagement that the person shows. So at the lower end of this scale, we find employees, team members with low competence, low skill and high engagement or high will. Typically people new to the organization or somebody who's new to the current function or role, who has been in the organization for a while but has now changed into a new role. Or somebody who just joined the organization. I mean, on the first day, they don't even know where the bathroom is or where the cafeteria is. So they need directive leadership. They need direction and orientation in order to feel safe and uh, start their work effectively. At the other far end, highest level of maturity, we find team members who show a high level of competence and a high level of engagement. Those people don't need anyone to tell them what to do. They are usually self-starters. They are usually potential new leaders. And the worst thing you can do is to give them a clear instruction or as Herbert von Karajan, the f uh, famous uh, orchestra conductor, once said, the worst thing I could do to my orchestra is to give them a clear instruction because they all know exactly what to do and how to play their instruments. In between, on that scale of maturity, we find employees with uh, some competence, some developed skills and high engagement and those with high competence and somewhat volatile engagement. Now, it has become obvious, I suppose, that you choose the right 
leadership style based on the level of maturity to be as effective as you can. Ideally, you lead every person in your team the way that they can bring out the best in them and perform at their best. And this may be different for each person in your team. And what also becomes obvious now is what can happen if you choose the wrong leadership style for a team member. So imagine for a moment that you have a team member with a high maturity level, high competency, high engagement. And because you think you have to, you give this person clear instructions all the time. You tell them exactly what to do and how to do it. Worst case, you will come across as a micromanager to that specific person and you will risk demotivation and a drop of engagement and a decrease of engagement because you choose the wrong leadership style. On the other end, if you have a person that's new to the organization, new to the job, and you decide to give them a maximum room to maneuver because you like to be you like to be led like that. You like to have a maximum room to maneuver and you, uh, you believe that others uh, have the same expectation. Worst case, you can demotivate that specific person because you give them a room to maneuver that is too large for them to fill at the given point in their development because they need orientation and guidance. So to sum it all up, Choose the right leadership style based on the situation and based on the maturity level of your employee. You can even go one step further and make it all transparent and sit down with your team members individually and ask them, what kind of leadership would you expect from me in order for you to be most uh, effective and performing at your best? You may not necessarily agree to what the person says, but if not, you can maybe agree on a period of transition where you say, OK, I hear that you would like to have maximum room to maneuver. I am a bit hesitant to go there already. Let's agree on a three months transition period in which I give a little more room to maneuver. I delegate a bit more. And then after three months, let's sit together again and assess the situation. And uh, if you prove that uh, I can give you maximum room to maneuver, I will, of course, be the first person to grant that. My wish for you is that this impulse will help you increase your personal effectiveness. Yours, Thomas Jenny.